So now uh, we start with our program. Yeah. Yes. Hi, Doc. Should, should we start, Sanchita, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, Dr. Chanda Maurya, Assistant Professor, Greenhouse Management, Ram Narayan Ruya, Autonomous College. Welcome you all for the lecture on Terrace Gardening, SPNF Method by Guruji Padma Shri Shri Subhas Palekarji. Now, I request Mr. Ravi Raghuvan, President of RCAA, that is Ruya College Alumni Association, to speak a few words. Sir, Ravi, sir, over to you. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, my video has been switched off. Uh, so if you want to see me, you'll have to let me start that. Uh, but otherwise, I can just go ahead uh, with the, without the video. Okay, sir. So, uh, carry on, sir. Continue, sir. Okay. Uh, so uh, as, as was introduced, uh, my name is uh, Ravi Raghavan. I'm the, currently serving as the president of the uh, Ruya College Alumni Association. Uh, we are an organization which is uh, primary purpose is to serve the needs of the, the college. And uh, we have amongst our members, uh, the alumni who have graduated from Ruya College over the last several years. And uh, we are led by a, a managing committee, a board of governors, uh, which uh, I currently lead for a two year term. We are all volunteers who spend our time for serving the needs of the college. And it is my plea to each and every one of you. Uh, I, I see uh, several people, more than 100 people in this audience. Uh, I think several of them must be alumni of Ruya, Ruya College. And it is my humble request that uh, each one of you consider becoming a member of the uh, Ruya College Alumni Association. Uh, the membership fee is just a rupees thousand. Uh, and that ent <laughs> entitles you to a lifetime of participation in the activities that are planned by the college, uh, by the association. Uh, one of the activities that we are supporting is the series of uh, lectures that are organized by the various departments of the college. And uh, in the last couple of months, this is the third such, uh, uh, second such lecture, which has uh, been organized under with the support of the uh, alumni association. The departments organize these lectures. Uh, we provide some assistance in terms of finance, uh, but uh, there is a lot more that we want to do, and it will not be possible if uh, we do not increase our membership. So once again, my humble request to each and every one of you here, uh, please join us. Our details are available on our website. The forms are available for download. You can make payments to our bank account directly. Uh, so please consider joining the association. This is a small, small way in which you can pay your repay your debt uh, to the college. So thank you very much for having me here and I wish the event all success. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Now I request Mrs. De uh, Monica Desmuk, ma'am, in charge of SPNF Navi Mumbai chapter. Madam, please over to you. Monica, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Guruji, Namaskar. Namaskar, Namaskar. Kase Ahat? Yeah, bilkul chan, bilkul. Badi. Kase Ahat? Chan, chan. Okay. Apan jawa jawa dono atas dhutu ahot. 
आवाज कटतो आहे मोनिका मॅम आपका व्हॉइस हाऊस मॅनेजमेंट डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ रुया कॉलेज अँड ऑल द डिग्नेटरीज बिकॉज ऑफ देम टुडेज वेबिनार वॉज पॉसिबल I would like to give my sincere thanks to respected principal of Ruya College, Dr. Anushree Lokur, uh, President Mr. Ravi Raghavan, and of course, uh, none other than Professor Sanchita Ma'am. Uh, without uh, making any further uh, delay, I would like to turn to Padma Shri Dr. Subhash Parekar Guruji. Guruji, uh, already you have been here for a long time, but you have been here for a long time. मी रजा घेते आणि आपल्याला रिक्वेस्ट करते की आपण आपले मौल्यवान मार्गदर्शन या पूर्ण वेबिनारच्या थ्रू आपल्या पार्टिसिपंट्सना द्यावे थँक्यू धन्यवाद नाव आय रिक्वेस्ट आर एच ओ डी डॉक्टर संचिता चौधरी मॅम टू इंट्रोड्यूस गुरुजी to give a brief introduction about our speaker guru ji padma shri shri subhas palekar ji over to you ma'am thank you chanda madam it is my proud privilege to introduce palekar sir of course sir is very well known to all of us and need no introduction i however would like to formally introduce sir to our young friends and all the gardening enthusiast पद्मश्री श्री सुभाष पालेकर जी सुभाष जी पालेकर इज अ वेल नो इज व्हेरी वेल नोन फॉर हिज स्पेशल मेथड ऑफ फार्मिंग नाव नोन एज सुभाष पालेकर नॅचरल और स्पिरिच्युअल फार्मिंग दिस टेक्निक वॉज अर्लिअर नोन एज झिरो बजेट नॅचरल फार्मिंग झिरो बजेट मीन्स विदाउट युझिंग एनी क्रेडिट्स अँड विदाउट स्पेंडिंग एनी मनी ऑन परचेज इनपुट्स this is however not possible particularly with farmers working at a large scale level therefore the name zero budget was not good enough and the focus was shifted to natural farming which means farming with nature and without chemicals subhash palekar natural farming is gaining great popularity and now it has become a movement palekar sir was born in belor village in karnataka he completed his graduation in agriculture from nagpur university and returned to his village to start inorganic farming using chemical fertilizers until he noticed a decline in crop yield and increase in disease spread concerned palekar sir came to the conclusion that there was something wrong with the agricultural technology that he was following as he was unable to find the reason behind the drop in the yield even after discussing with many experts subsequently he happened to visit the forest inhabited by gond tribesmen i would request you to please uh, mute yourselves subsequently he happened to visit the forest inhabited by gond tribesmen and observed the tribal pouring dung into the flowing water seeing the tribal seeing the tribals growing 32 different crops per acre he was convinced that something was hidden in nature in the meanwhile having two items at the moment In, in the meanwhile uh, kindly mute your uh, mics in the meantime meanwhile palekar sir got an opportunity to meet and discuss the four step techniques of natural farming with japanese philosopher mr fukuwa who was on a visit to india for promoting the concepts of natural farming later a movement in karnataka state was born out of collaboration between mr subhash palekar who put together the zbf practices and the state farmers association karnataka rajya raita sangha both put together were instrumental in mobilizing farmers at the grassroots level and organized many massive zbf tra- training camp with the help of like minded people and organized 
SPNF farmers are mainly of rural origin with most of them owning land and are economically independent. Sir was awarded Bharat Krishak Ratna pr Prasisti in 2006 by Karnataka State Riot Sangha. Padma Shri was awarded to Palikar Sir, lovingly known as Guruji, in 2016. Sir's vast experience and knowledge of growing plants using natural farming method touched the urban people too. Now, there are many SNPF chapters in cities like Mumbai, Pune, Nasik, and many more. The dearth of space could not deter the urban people from growing plants, and they started growing plants on terrace, balcony, backyard, and foyard following the SPNF method. We would love to have many people practicing gardening through <laughs> this method and the students to understand the SPNF method better. I now request Guruji uh, Sri Subhash Palekar to start with his lecture. Sir, the platform is all yours. Another English, yes, English another... language, English language, man. Uh, sir, English, Hindi, whatever. <laughs> Uh, and one request to the participants, uh, kindly put your questions in the chat box. Your questions will be taken at the end of the lecture. Thank you, sir. Please continue. Thank you very much. Honorable uh, Vijay Agwanji, uh, Ananya Association, Honorable Agwanji, sorry. Honorable Professor Sanjita Chaudhariji, Head of the um, Department Greenhouse Management of some uh, Guria College. Also, Honorable, my colleague, Monika Deshmukh, and also all other dignitaries from Guria College, students, and listeners. I am thankful to management of Guria College which belong to Shikshan Prasadak Mandali Pune, which is a world-famous education society. And uh, also thankful to all of you who are involved in this one and a half hour, or two hour my lecture. Basically, the listeners are not really the farmers. They are the consumers, but they are very fond of about the nature. So they want to involve in the natural way of life. So subject will not be only natural farming, subject will be back to nature. When anybody get the birth, at about time, he, came, he comes on the earth with close fist. And when he die with open fist. What is the meaning? If anybody is coming on the earth at the birth time with close hands, close fist, that means something is given by the God in the fist. What is the given, uh, what is given by the God in the closed fist? Not any wealth, not a Mercedes car, a big Bangalore, not a super class one no career service. These are not given by the God. The God has given two aims in the closed hands. Number one, Everybody have to give your all services to those people who are really exploited. And second one, a beautiful nature, which is given by God with lot of natural resources for the benefits of the human being and living beings. But human being is destroying this nature 
so you go on the earth and again strengthen the nature again these are two aims has been given by the god in the close hands i am asking all students and lecturers who are listening my workshop what you are what you are doing what you are doing for the benefits of the god created nature whether you are given the solutions to solve the problems which are coming very fastly in front of the human being whether you are working for only to take the salary on the last of the first of the month what you are doing you to first month to give the choice what we have to do basically before 1400 crore year ago this universe is created by the god i mean not a visible god invisible god not seen by anybody not i have seen also before 450 crore year ago the earth is created and first environment is created by the god then by the combination hydrolysis process of hydrogen and oxygen water is created on earth and now 70% surface of the earth is saturated by only water ocean water and also the good water and then god has created one cellular animal inside the water in the ocean and that unicellular animal is developed is converted into multicellular animal and then the first vegetation has been created by the god on the earth as a food for vegetarian animals and then vegetarian animal are sent on the earth by the god including human as a vegetarian and then to control the population of vegetarian animals god has sent on the earth non vegetarian animals there is specific sequence of the creation of living beings on the earth that means human being is 100% vegetarian and as human being is 100% vegetarian our food is only the loose the flowers fruits grains and tubers of the vegetation and god has given lot of food material in the nature in the form of vegetation for living beings which are vegetarian animals definitely we have all food in the nature but what is the food of the plant body basically any body of the living being including vegetation is constituted by four five major elements that means we are called in indian philosophy panchama bhutas prithvi a tej vayu and akash prithvi means minerals which are taken through the soil up means water has been given by the monsoon free of cost 
Tej means solar energy is given by the sun free of cost by means of the photosynthesis process. Vayu Mahabhuta means carbon dioxide is given by the atmosphere to the green juice for photosynthesis process. That means carbon assimilation process free of cost. And last, cosmo, uh, cosmic energy, Akash Mahabhuta, using bias mass free of cost. And the medical fundamental science says that 97 to 90.5% body is constituted by only four major elements. Up means water, Tej means solar energy, Y means carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and Akash Mahabhuta means cosmic energy. If it is the scientific truth that maximum 98.5% body is counted by these four elements, major elements, which are not given by the human being to the plants, which are given by the nature free of cost, where the question is arise that any manure and fertilizer is a food of any plant. It is totally wrong concept. It is 100% untruth concept that the manure and fertilizer is a food of any plant body. Basically, 97 to 98% body is constituted by only four major elements which are not given by the human being, automatically, naturally given by the nature Free of cost, only 1.5% to 3%. Minerals are taken to the soil by the roots. And there are huge quantity of the minerals in the soil. What are the claims are done by agriculture science and technologists that there is no existence of the minerals nutrients in the soil, so we have to apply by, by means of the manure and fertilizers. These claims are totally wrong. These people are not telling the truth because they doesn't know, they do not know what is the basic science and what is the truth. Basically, basically, if you will go to the nature. Nature is not created by the human being. The God has sent the nature on the earth first and then sent to human being on the earth. That means nature is not the creation of the human being. Nature is the creation of the God. That means, which is existed in the nature that is natural and that is spiritual. If the nature is created by the God, not created by the human being, that means nature is the constitution of the God. Basically, we can say nature is the God invisible God, not seen anybody. I have not also seen the God in front of me as invisible. You go to the dense forest, which is the nature. You cut down any leaf of any plant of the forest and investigate in the labor. You will not see any deficiency of any nutrient in the plant body. No deficiency of the nitrogen, no deficiency of the phosphate and potash, and no deficiency of the nutrients. That means, that means all the nutrients which are required for the growth and development of the plant body 
all given available by the God naturally. That means, that means, soil is totally saturated by all nutrients. As per the claims of the agriculture scientist and so-called technologist, that soil is totally deficited by nutrient. I am asking one question to them, why there is no deficiency of any nutrient in the plant body in the forest? If there is no nutrient deficiency, that means all nutrients are available, taken to the soil, ultimately we can say, we can claim, it is the truth, that soil is ocean of the nutrient. And this claim of the agriculture science and technologist is totally wrong, that there are no nutrients in the soil. But which nutrients are existed in the soil? They are not in available form. They are in non-available form because <clears throat> the roots of any plant want the nutrient in the cooked stage, not in the raw stage. And this cooking attempt has been given by the God to microorganisms in the soil. That means the God has given the contract to cook the nutrient in the soil to convert non-available into available form to the variable, invisible, visible, non-unknown species of the microorganism. That means you have to accept the truth that soil is totally saturated by all nutrients, soil is a annapurna. The claims are done by the agriculture universities, ICAR, and so-called technologist is totally wrong. What are the nutrients are uh, in the soil, are in raw stage, microorganisms cook them and convert into available form, and that is called the growth character system of the nutrient availability. Satyu. <clears throat> that means we do not want any manure. We do not want any fertilizer. We do not want any nutrient which are purchased from the companies. Nothing to be utilized in the soil because soil is unnatural. <clears throat> only, only we want microorganism species which are real mother inside the soil, which cook the food and supply to the roots. When I came on the conclusion after my 12 year research, 1988, 2000, 2000, that God has given the important prior role to the microorganisms and local earthworms to give available all the nutrients to the roots of any plant. That means we have to supply only microorganism to the soil, not necessary to utilize any manure and fertilizer. So discard manure and fertilizer from your mind. It is totally wrong. And when you apply manure and fertilizer, you become responsible for global warming and climate change because the huge greenhouse gases are emitted in the input industries of chemical farming. And when you utilize cow dung manure, compost, vermicompost, biodynamic, and also panjagavya, all these 
inputs in organic farming are responsible for the emission of the greenhouse gases in huge quantity, which are responsible for global warming and climate change. And also, when these organic and chemical inputs are manufactured in the factories, raw material is coming from the nature and nature is exploited. And this input industry emit huge quantity of the smoke in the sky in the form of greenhouse gases responsible for global warming and climate change. And when you utilize the cow dung manure, compost, vermicompost in the soil, you are depositing cadmium, arsenic, mercury, lead, heavy poisonous heavy metals in the soil, and also, also radioactive elements, which are too much hazardous for the human health. That means you are poisoning the soil when you utilize organic farming, cow-based farming, sustainable agriculture, and also Parampuragat Khiti means indigenous ancient agriculture technology. Even when you utilize the chemical fertilizers, hazardous, poisonous insecticides, fungicides, also herbicides, hormones, organic acids, and also humic acid in the soil as the inputs of chemical farming. The residues of these chemical fertilizers, insecticides, fungicides, hormones are coming in the food. And when you eat chemically grown food and organically grown food, these residues of the poisons and also residues of the heavy metals, cadmium, arsenic, mercury, lead, and radioactive elements are coming in our body by eating chemically grown and organically grown food. And as these all residues are not natural, are not existed in the nature, are not created by the God, by the nature. That means are not the actual food of human intestine. So these residues are not accepted by human intestine, are rejected, ultimately, are deposited in the human cells as a toxic garbage. And as it is a toxic, that means poison, it destroy, it destroy the supply chain of immunity system of the human being. There is a great importance of the immunity system in our human body, which save our body from hazardous deathful diseases like corona, diabetes, cancer, heart attack, and all other deathful diseases. These immune systems are having white blood cell, white blood cell, and B lymphocyte cells, T lymphocyte cells, macrophages and neutrophils. These are the four basic fundamentals of the immune system of human body. And this supply chain, supply chain. 
good bacteria enzymes and vital power good bacteria enzymes and vital power is supplied to the immune system so that immune system can activate and when you eat chemically grown organically grown poisonous food ultimately residues are deposited in 60 trillion 60 lakh crore human cells as a toxic garbage as it is a poison and this poison toxins destroy good good bacteria destroy enzymes and finish the vital power ultimately we lose our immunity and we face death by corona cancer diabetes heart attack when you eat chemically grown and organically grown food you are finishing your life speedy speedy anybody can face the death by corona cancer diabetes heart attack basically these are the gift not given by the god not given by the nature our death due to dreadful diseases are created by human being by so called technology and science everybody has to alert about about the one truth that corona like viruses and also pathogenic bacteria are changing their bodies by internal natural genetic mutations swayam utparivartan these mutations inside the body of corona rna they are developing new strains of the corona viruses and bacteria and this new viruses will create a big problem more serious than this corona number 1 what are the new strains are coming of the viruses and pathogenic bacteria which are very serious matter and real cause is climate change due to the climate change change and global warming there is a great impact of the climate change on the biological watch which existed in the human body in the virus body in the bacterial body in the bird body and animal body also because god has given 100% pure environment to the human being before 1776 when james were developed first steam engine before 17 and 76 the air quality index of the air was below 30 that means when the air quality index of the air is below 30 that air is good for human health that air is good for photosynthesis of every green vegetation and the best for survival of every living being but now 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 due to the climate change and so called western 
लाइफस्टाइल हेडोनिस्ट लाइफस्टाइल वे आर पोलूटिंग एटमोस्फेयर स्पीडिली एज ए रिजल्ट एज ए रिजल्ट द एयर क्वालिटी इंडेक्स ऑफ द एयर इज इनांस अबो 350 इन नवंबर इट इनांस अबो 700 आल्सो इट इज टोटली अननेचुरल इट इज टोटली अननेचुरल व्हिच कैन नॉट बी एक्सेप्टेड बाय by any living being including viruses and bacteria pathogen bacteria when the carbon dioxide proportion in atmosphere will be 280 ppm that atmosphere is best for environmental purification and also carbon assimilation or photosynthesis process of vegetation and for human breathing also but now but now carbon dioxide content in the atmosphere is enhanced more than 480 ppm also it is totally unnatural it is totally unnatural when the intensity of the solar light is remain in between 5000 to 7000 foot candle that intensity is the best for human life and living being life but now now due to global warming the intensity of the solar light is gone in arms about 10000 to 12000 foot candle also it is totally unnatural things totally unnatural things because of this unnatural impact of the climate change and global warming on the all living beings this biological wash which was given by the god is totally become disturbed not coming under control of human being and also viruses and as a impact the mutation is happening inside the body it is a natural internal mutations as a result new strains are developing even even human body also is changing speedily those my girls student girls which lady girl was about 18 year old then monthly course was start now as a impact of global warming and climate change and these residues of the uh, poisons taken by through the food by chemically grown and organically grown 10 year old girl is facing monthly course it is totally unnatural it is totally unnatural not seen in the past not seen in the past that means on the name of science and technology on the name of hedonist lifestyle of western countries we are cutting the branch on which we are sitting it is totally hazardous for future generations for future generations and those who are creating this problems they are not having any solution they are not having any solution due to corona crisis and global recession you know industrial sector now is facing so many problems and as a result of corona crisis and global recession industry sector will not be able to create new jobs current jobs may be may be lost may be lost and government is not having the capacity 
to create new jobs. And these universities are creating every year millions of the students are coming outside the university with the degrees, postgraduate degree, graduate degrees, useless degree, useless. They will not get jobs because they do not know the innovation, innovative power. They do not know the skill. They do not know the creation. Because in the syllabuses of the university, these things are not involved. What they will do? What they will do? What they will do? There was my lecture at IIT Delhi. I asked one question, what you are doing? The student said, sir, I am now MTech and uh, I am going to service. I have selected, I am selected. How many land you have? Sir, I was having five acres sold by my father for my education, no land. No. I asked that question. Suppose you will not get any, any, any uh, job. You will not get any service. What you will do? He was not having any answer. He was not having any answer. Millions and millions of the students and youth are coming outside the universities. What they will do? If they will go back to agriculture and they will commit definitely the suicides due to the chemical farming and more dangerous organic farming, very costly and definitely very loss, huge losses in the agriculture. Nobody wants to continue the agriculture. What they will do? What they will do? Hunger in the stomach, anger in the mind, they will create the violence. They will create the violence. It has happened in Western African countries and also Middle East. It has happened. So it is the time now to rethink about the policies, maybe agricultural policies of the government, maybe educational policies of the government, maybe economical policies of the government. Nobody has the solution, but we say very proudly, we have the solution. We have the solution. In Subhash Palekar Natural Farming, nothing to be purchased from the market because none of the manure and none of the fertilizer is a food of any plant body. Since 10,000 years, which technologies are given by the technologists in agriculture sector, everybody is claiming that manure and fertilizer is a food of plant body. So we have to apply in the form of organic fertilizers, cotton manure, compost, vermicompost, and chemical fertilizer. Subhash Palekar is the first person who claimed, and not only claiming, developed millions of the models that none of the manure and none of the fertilizer is a food of any plant body. So not necessary to utilize any manure and fertilizer for the growth and development of the plant. In Subhash Palika natural farming, no cotton manure, no compost, no vermicompost, no chemical fertilizers, no micronutrients, no organic fertilizers, 
nothing, nothing, nothing to be utilized. Cost of production of manure and fertilizer is zero. As in Subhash Valley natural farming, we are creating the immunity. Basically, God has given the innate immunity to every living being, including vegetation. But that immunity is suppressed, lost. In Subhash Valley natural farming, we are creating the immunity, resistance power in the plant body. So, those who are practicing my technology, 100%, no insect attack, no disease attack. That means no insecticide and fungicide are to be spread. No manure, no fertilizer, no insecticide, no fungicides. Total cost of production in children. And basically, when we say the plant body is constituted by five major elements, Panchamabhutas, Prithvi, Aap, Tej, Vayu, and Akash, we have seen 97 to 98.5% bodies constituted by only four major elements, that means carbon dioxide, soil energy, and water, given by the nature free of cost, only 1.5% to 3% minerals are taken through the soil, nitrogen is taken by the nitrogen fixing bacteria from the atmosphere, and are supplied by the roots free of cost. Here is the ocean of the nitrogen. Ocean, 78.6% nitrogen is existed in the atmosphere. And that atmosphere with nitrogen is supplied by the nitrogen fixing bacteria to the roots free of cost. In the soil, enriched by phosphate and potash and micronutrients in huge quantity. God has given the contract to convert non-available phosphate into available form to phosphate solubilizing bacteria. That means if we will utilize, introduce Phosphate solubilizing bacteria in the soil, not necessary to utilize any phosphatic fertilizer in the soil. God has given the contract to basilica, Bacillus silicus microorganisms to convert non available potash into available form. That means we do not want any potassium fertilizers. We want to introduce only bacillus silicus like converter bacteria in the side of the soil. And you know, so many bacterial species, including funguses, as like mycorrhizas, are involved in the conversion process of non-available into available form. That means, that means not necessary to utilize any manure and fertilizer. Discard the manure and fertilizers from the mind. Only we have to introduce microorganisms to cook the food to supply to the new, to the roots. When I have started my research work since 1988 to 2000, 12 years, at last I came on the conclusion during my research work 
that God has given only one role to the microorganisms and local earthworms to supply all nutrients to the soil. And also, God has given the contract to capillary force to take the deeper nutrients and to give all level to the roots. These are the natural forces which are created not by the human being, only by the God, or you can say the nature. And during my research work, I came on the conclusion we have to supply only microorganisms in the soil, in the culture. In the culture. Then I started to find out which culture is the best culture of microorganisms, all species which are identified, unidentified, visible, invisible, known, unknown, sent by the God to introduce in the soil. Afterward, I came on the conclusion that God has sent one beautiful animal on the earth, and that is the local cow, Bos indicus, which is based on very beautiful space. Satyo, when I came on the conclusion that cow dung is having the intestine, which is the best factory of creating the microorganisms. On the earth, there is no any factory developed by the human being, so called technologist and scientist, which will create the microorganisms in the laboratory. In the laboratory, microorganisms are not created, only are multiplied by cell division. But only one factory, that is the intestine of the local cow, which create these visible, invisible, uncountable microorganisms, which are coming on the cow dung of local cow. And then I have decided to utilize, to investigate the cow dung and the urine in the laboratory. I have tested the cow dung of all Indian cow bits, which are boss indicus, which are belong to Jebu family. And also I have instigated the dung and urine of Jesulostin, which are Western bits of the cows. And also I have investigated the dung and urine of buffaloes, goats, shifts and camels in the laboratory. At last I found the best culture of the uncountable microorganisms is the local cow dung. Is the local cow dung. In one gram of the local cow dung, I have found 3,000 million beneficial effective microorganisms. More not less, more not less. That means local cow dung is the ocean of the microorganism. In the dung of Jesse Ulustin, which is not a cow, which is not a cow, it is another hazardous animal, hazardous animal, which is launched in India as a three plant conspiracy. Not seen, not seen more than 70 lakh population maximum here 
pathogenic bacteria in one gram of the dung of Jesse and Worst. That means only local cow dung is the best culture of microorganisms. I came on the conclusion. Then I started to investigate how much cow dung is required for one acre. I have taken the so many trials, 1,000 kg, 900 kg, 800, 700, 600, 500, 400, 300, 250, 200, 180, 160, 160, 140, 120, 100, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 18 to 1 kg also. I have changed the quantity. And after three years, I came on the conclusion, not necessarily 1,000, not necessarily 500 kg, not necessarily 200 kg, even not necessarily 100 kg also. Only we want 10 kg cow dung per acre once a month, not as a manure, not as a fertilizer, only as a best culture of the microorganism. One local cow cast 11 kg cow dung on average per day. When you take 10 kg cow dung of one day, of one cow for one acre, because it is one of one acre, that means we have to realize once a month, that means one local cow dung of 30 days for 30 acre. If you have one local cow, you can cultivate 30 acre of land, maybe irrigated, maybe dry land. So how it is easy? How it is easy? In India, 35 crore acre land under cultivation. Today we have. If Indian government will accept Subhash Palika natural farming as a policy, I know they will not accept, but if, suppose, then we want only three crore local cows or four crore local cows to saturate all 35 crore acre land. And today we have eight crore cows, double than requirement. Cow is not the problem. Cow is not the problem. But, but Bundelkhand, your, uh, our uh, Vidharva, Marathwada, Telangana, and Northern Karnataka, Saurashtra and Rajasthan are having huge quantity of the local cows. But southern parts of India and developed state of India are not having local cow. Only we have to exchange the cows then we can solve any problem. Under Subhash Palikar natural farming, we do not want any manure and fertilizer because none of the manure and fertilizer is a food of any plant. Any plant. We want only local cow and local cow drink. Then I have developed the best culture of all visible, invisible microorganism species, not specific five and four species, not whole, holistic. And that I have given name, Jiva Amruta, Ghana Jiva Amruta, as a best culture of the microorganisms. Satyu. In Subhash Palekar Natural Farming, 
production is not lost. Production is not reduced. But since first year, production is enhanced. Cost of production is zero. Production is more than chemical and organic farming. And as it is a naturally grown, nutritious, medicinal, and poison free, the consumers are giving double rates for our productions. That means cost of person zero, no reduction in the production, you are getting double rates, no problem of suicides of the farmer, no problem. And as we are feeding poisonless food, nutritious food to the human being, we are creating the resistance power in the human body, no problem, corona, cancer, diabetes, heart attack, no problem. No problem. But not only we have to utilize naturally grown poison free nutritious food, also we have to stop the utilization of unnatural food, also, unnatural food, also. Wheat is unnatural food for human in India. White rice in, is unnatural food. White sugar is unnatural food. White salt is unnatural food. Refined flour maida is unnatural food. This uh, fried, fried food material Samosa, Indi, uh, samosa and uh, gulab jam, jia, all are unnatural foods which are not existing in the nature. And when we eat this unnatural food, ultimately, one minute, ultimately, Kindly mute yourself. Rucha, can you please mute your phone? Please mute your phone. Don't disturb. Yes, we can continue. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. These are the unnatural food materials not existed in the nature. If you want to survive, if you want to not to have a cancer, diabetes, heart attack, corona, you have to accept one truth that human is a vegetarian animal. Otherwise, you can't save your body from corona, cancer, and diabetes. When you eat this unnatural food, as a human is a vegetarian, our food is only the grains, 
the fruits leaves tubers and pods of the plant world no fried food no white sugar no refined oil no wheat no white salt no white rice also because all these unnatural full materials including wheat flour and white sugar and white rice these are acidic these are acidic food these are not alkaline food and our blood is alkaline blood is not acidic the ph value of the blood is 7.4 when you eat wheat flour chapati white rice white salt refined oil which is percent purchased from the market and this oily food and fried food just like bhujiya samosa kachori these are not accepted by our intestine because are not existed in the nature are unnatural ultimately residues of these foods are deposited in human cell as a toxic garbage and when you eat this unnatural acidic food acidity of the blood is increased and when the acidity of the blood is increased blood is become help help helpless to supply the vital power oxygen to the human cells and for that purpose the activities of the blood is coming under pressure to neutralize the acidity blood want the enzymes which are involved in other activities and also blood want the calcium to neutralize this acidity and when we want huge quantity of the calcium the enzymes are coming to the blood and they are taking the calcium to the bones and teeth to neutralize the acidity ultimately the whole circulated in the bones and we are suffer by the disease osteoporosis and weak teeth ultimately we lose our resistance power and we suffer by death from diseases even even you the home is having the milk maybe milk of local cow just you know in buffalo or any other synthetic milk which is prepared in the factory everybody is drinking the milk in the tea or orally or everybody is eating the sweets which are prepared by the milk but but i will give one truth that milk is not the human food maybe milk of local cow maybe milk of buffalo goat and sheep or camels milk is not a food of human being and none of the animal excluding human is drinking the milk of another animal every animal is drinking the only milk of real mother that mean as per the law of the nature as per the constitution of the god cow milk also is not a food of human being buffalo milk also is not a human food and also the goat and sheep milk is not a human food 
and if as it is unnatural except mother milk all other milks are unnatural not accepted by human intestine rejected and we suffer so many our lungs problem respiratory system problem when you feed mother milk to the infant our child it is a real food for infant but but when you feed local cow milk or buffalo milk to your child suppose you are losing the future of the child because in future he will suffer so many problems of asthma since childhood and respiratory system because there is a reaction of the body when you eat the milk and milk products milk also is not a natural food of human being so if you want to face with corona incoming strains of the corona definitely they will come cancer diabetes heart attack alzheimer also meningitis spondylitis number 1 you have to take the oath that i will eat only naturally grown food not chemically grown and organically grown i will not eat unnatural things like white sugar wheat white rice and refined edible oil and also oily food material millets are the best solution for wheat and white rice maybe finger the millet maybe brown top millet maybe barnyard millet or proso millet kodo millet little millet pearl millet or coarse millet jar are the best human food which are not acidic all the millets are alkaline and also every disease is coming to the constipation and we suffer by the constipation due to deficiency of the fiber in the food and wheat is having only 1.2% fiber wheat wheat only having 1% to 1.2% fiber and white rice only 0.2% fiber we want 3.5% fiber in the food wheat is fiberless white rice rice fiberless sugar fiberless all these acidic materials are fiberless but millets are having the best proportion of the fiber brown top millet 12.6% barnyard millet 10.8% even finger millet 11.5% little millet toso millet kodo millet all millets are having the best sources of the uh, your uh, fiber and when you eat the millets you will not suffer by the constipation and definitely our intestinal diseases you will not suffer otherwise otherwise we will finish our life so we have to take the decision to utilize the ragi nasni finger millet and also proso millet ori kangni 
Worry, uh, Gaga, that means Foxchild millet, highly nutritious. All these millets are alkaline, highly nutritious, and having all amino acids, all amino acids, fiber, and gluten free, gluten free. White uh, wheat is a gluten. And that gluten is more dangerous for human health. We have to eat the millets. We have to eat only that edible oil which is manufactured in the cold place without utilizing any chemicals. We have to utilize the best sources of the enzymes, good bacteria, and vital power. That means the fresh fruits, natural fruit, fruits, and natural vegetables. You have to change your habits, food habits. Everything is given by the food. Every vitamins are given by the food, but vitamin D is not happened, existed in the food. Vitamin D is given by the tender sunlight in the morning and evening. But in Mumbai, Pune, big cities, you are sitting, you are journeying, you are sleeping, you are eating in the AC, you are not getting sunlight. You are huge buildings and even morning also, you are not getting sunlight. 90% global people is suffering by deficiency of vitamin D. And alert, don't take all these medicines, synthetic vitamins, synthetic all medicines are unnatural things, are not accepted by human body, are deposited in the human cells as a toxic garbage, as the toxins we destroy, we lose our immunity and suffer by death from diseases. So, when you go to the market, you know, mother of Monika Deshmukh has given to the market to purchase the vegetable and suffer by the corona. And which vegetable you are purchasing, fruits you are purchasing, they are having residues of the fungicide, insecticides, herbicides and uh, fertilizers, very hazardous, very hazardous. Not even when you purchase organic grown food, you eat cadmium, arsenic, mercury, lead, and also these are the poisonous heavy metals and radioactive elements. That's why, what is the solution? Solution is terrace gardening. Solution is terrace gardening. Not necessary to purchase the vegetables and fruits from the market. If your terrace, if your balcony, if your window, you can grow the poisonless, nutritious, medicinal vegetables, fruits, and also grains, tubers in your terraces, balconies, and the windows also. We have started this back to nature movement in Mumbai, and Monika Deshmukh was the leading partner of my workshop in New Mumbai. And huge response was given by the Mumbai consumers. We are linking to Mumbai, Pune, 
citizens, consumers, to our natural farmers, so that natural farmers will give the delivery, door delivery, naturally given food to you, straight to consumer, without any mediator, without any mediator. Maybe you hear you are a rich person in the world, richest. In the post list, you have a number one. You don't know how much you are richest, but you are bigger. You are bigger. If you are not getting poison free food, nutritious food, and medicinal food, you are bigger. You are poor. You are the poorest people in the world. And by means of the money, you can't purchase vital power and your life. Because these are not sold in the market. Only solution to manufacture the nutritious medicinal poison tree food material on our terraces, balconies. If it is not possible to get available the balconies, terraces, because you are in the uh, societies, even you are not having khidiki window, windows are closed by AC. OK, no problem, no problem. You go to the nearest village where farmers are practicing Subhash Palakar natural farming. They are producing natural vegetables, grains, fruits, and all other food materials. We will join you with them. And the rates will be fixed by the farmer and you. Don't bargain. Don't bargain. They are not selling only food to you. They are giving your life, right to alive. Not given by Indian constitution, but our farmers are giving right to alive by giving you poison free food. Don't bargain. Fixed rate in throughout the year, fixed rate. 80 rupees per kg, fixed rate throughout the year. Maybe fruit, maybe vegetable. When the rates will be fallen down, 2 rupees kg, you have to give you 80 rupees kg. If rates will be high, 200 rupees kg, you will give only 80 rupees kg. That means both will be assured. Consumers will be assured. And producer farmers will be assured that they will get fixed rate throughout the year. No problem. Sunday, you take your car, you take your food with you, you take your instruments to work there, you go your car with your family on the farm of Subhash Palakar Natural Farming uh, uh, Practicing Farmer. You work there. Throughout the day, you listen him. You study how they uh, manufacture the Jivamrutam, Ghana Jivamruta, and medicines. How they utilize. You see, observe, study well. And when you are aware how to prepare Jivamruta, Ghana Jivamruta, then the, our farmer. Our Goshalas will give you the uh, dung of local cow urine. Only you have to utilize uh, pulses flour and naturally grown uh, jagri. You can prepare Jivamruta in your home very, very successfully, very uh, not necessary to any uh, problems. And then you can utilize Jivamrutam. We will supply you the local seeds of the vegetables, no problem. If you will involve 
in this back to nature mass movement definitely probably supply and monika deshmukh our team there is our team in pune mumbai they will help you in when corona crisis will be finished uh i will organize uh, one two day back to nature workshop at uh, mumbai maybe organize can be organized by any organization we are free and today everybody will listen the back to nature and natural way of life how to save the earth from the impact of the global i mean climate climate change you have the role you have the role because the carbon dioxide nitrous oxide and methane are the greenhouse gases which are responsible for global warming and climate change not are only emitted by chemical farming and organic farming not only emitted by industries you you are also responsible for the emission of greenhouse gases you are self you are responsible when you utilize morning the toothpaste and toothbrush you become responsible for global warming and climate change because because the raw material to manufacture this toothbrush and toothpaste are coming from the nature nature is exploited and industry which manufacture this toothpaste and brush are emitting huge quantity of the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and also when you purchase the brush and paste you are losing your economy and when you use paste ultimately you are polluting water 10 gram pollutant per human per day 10 gram multiplied by 350 days multiplied by 130 crore indian how much water you you are polluting by only utilizing brush and paste i hope made tooth powder danta manjana if it is possible to we want to give the best bright future to the our future generations you would take the oath today that since today i will not utilize the toothbrush and toothpaste i would like only the tooth powder which is prepared in your home after taking the uh, you are brush you are utilizing the uh, you are lotion and brush for you are saving another again you are become responsible for global warming and climate change because because to manufacture the lotion and the brush for saving purpose raw material is coming from the nature and nature is exploited industries are emitting huge quantity of greenhouse gases responsible for global climate change and here in wash your face after saving you are polluting water you are polluting water you are become responsible for the global warming and climate change and pollution of the water not necessary i was also utilizing brush and the lotion one day i have decided to utilize only water i started to water and since 30 year i am not utilizing any brush and lotion i am utilizing only water now i have started to <laughs> keep my uh, 
uh, not necessary water loss. If it is possible, clean uh, shaving you can do only by utilizing water, not necessary to utilize brush and lotion. You have to take the oath, since tomorrow morning, I will not utilizing the brush and lotion for my shaving, only I will utilize the water. You will become a champion to restrict the global warming climate change. Government is not having the solution. Science and technology is not having the solution. Understood? Understood. After taking the shaving, you are taking the bath and you are utilizing the soap. Which birds are utilizing soap? How beautiful they are? How beautiful they are? Which cow is utilizing the soap? How beautiful they are? When you purchase the soap from the market, you are cutting your pocket, you are cutting Indian economy because all things are manufactured by multinational companies. Money is going outside India. You are the exporter of Indian economy. You become yourself, become exporter of Indian economy. And raw material is coming from the nature to manufacture the soap, and you are become responsible to destruction of the natural resources. And industry of the soap is emitting huge quantity of the smoke in the atmosphere, greenhouse gases, and which are responsible and global warming and climate change. And when you take the bath, take the bath by soap, you are polluting water 20 gram per person. 20 gram per person, that means 20 gram multiplied 365 days multiplied by 120 crore people in India and 760 crore people in the entire world. How much water is polluted by you? I am not utilizing soap since 30 years. There is no bad smell to my body. No. Because God has created best detergent, that is the cold water. I am not utilizing hot water. I am utilizing only cold water. I am not utilizing any, any soap. I am a fresh 10 hours in a day. I am giving my lecture continuous nine days, 10 days. No fatigue, no fatigue. And that pollutants through the water is coming in the drinking water, is coming in the irrigation water. And when you utilize that water, all these pollutants are, are coming in our waterways. And that is the poison. We lose our immunity and we are suffer by death through disease. Nobody is human, is surviving today without taking medicine. Everybody is taking medicine. Everybody is taking medicine. Why? 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 Unnatural life and unnatural food. Understood. Afterward, after taking bath, you are wearing your cloth and polyester cloth. Very hazardous, very hazardous. When you purchase polyester cloth, you are destroying the millions of the jobs because polyester cloth are manufactured by robot guided automatic machines, not by human resources, not by human resources. And polyester is not a natural cloth. It is unnatural. So many allergies we face inside the body on the skin also. But when you purchase khadi from the Gramat, khadi gramadyog mahamandal, you are giving the millions of the jobs, millions of the jobs, millions of jobs. As cotton is given the by the God, it is a hundred percent natural. We show our body, we show our body. When 
you utilize this polyester you are exploiting the nature because raw material is coming from the nature and the factories are emitting huge quantity of the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere which are responsible for global warming and climate change but but when you purchase the cloth cotton cloth or khadi no emission of greenhouse gases everything is handmade everything is handmade in asian countries african countries and latin american countries we do not want this western like of economics and so called development which are not dependent on human resources now which are is dependent on robot guided automatic machines and artificial intelligence everything will be done in the factories in the agriculture in the shops in the education systems in every aspect of the life by robot guided atomic machines and artificial intelligence what youth will be do what youth will be do hunger in the stomach anger in the mind there will be big violence throughout the world in the future so unnatural food unnatural behavior we have to stop we have the solution in swasth palika natural farming on terraces on balconies when you will grow naturally grown poison free nutritious medicinal food material then you will see your life we will supply cow dung and urine don't care <coughs> only we have to prepare jiwam tum gharan jiwam in ho very easy very easy <coughs> very easy 20 liter <coughs> water 20 liter water you have to take only 20 liter water and uh, uh, 500 ml to 100 uh, uh, 500 ml to 1 kg uh, cow urine if you are vegetarian you can utilize your own urine it is the best medicine in the world not necessary to purchase from the uh, go shala 1 kg local cow dung 100 g jagri natural jagri and 100 g uh you have pulses store that is besan you stir it well for fermentation keep it with the cover of gunny bag for 48 hours thrice a day you stir it well for just for 1 minute after 48 hours jivamrutam will be ready to give and you give 100 ml jivamrutam twice a month or thrice a month per plant you will get miracle in your terraces and balconies when this building cement buildings are responsible for global warming climate change because they become hot and reflecting the heat in the atmosphere it is very hazardous very hazardous your cement concrete forest your buildings of cement are also responsible to destroy your future global warming and climate change but when you cover your terraces by terrace gardening you will restrict the global warming because your roof will not become hot when you will cover the entire walls by terrace gardening vertical gardening you can restrict the global warming and climate change you want you want <clears throat> i will say 
don't utilize cow milk don't utilize synthetic milk don't utilize ghee don't utilize ghee also don't utilize curd also yogurt also these are unnatural things for human health very hazardous very hazardous because unnatural unnatural it is very essential to stop the utilization of the milk and milk products not necessary at all not necessary at all. a huge elephant huge elephant having enormous strength it can uproot a big tree without any exertion 100% pure vegetarian elephant is not drinking the milk elephant is not eating the ghee a strongest animal in the world not suffering by disease there are no hospitals of the animals in the forest because they are following 100% to the god they are not giving the challenge to the god that we are creating our own parallel system again the god system they are not challenging the god so they are not having any problem but we human every attempt of human life is a big challenge to the god we are the creator our problems and we have no solutions back to nature natural food and natural way of life is only the solution for that purpose i am praying you i am requesting you please your future generations will not survive you have read in the print media you have seen the footage in the electronic media of that uh, natural calamity which has happened in uttarakhand this is the beginning this is the beginning it is starting it is starting it is starting after 50 year Mumbai will be merged in the sea water after 50 years. What you will do? What you will do? Because by the melting of the glaciers and ice cover on the all poles, the sea level is increasing continuously. I have seen in Kerala. I have seen in the Kerala. I have seen in the Kerala. Mumbai people, you have to register your booking on the moon or Mars. Your future will be finished if you will continue this Western type of the lifestyle. So, why how do you think? India is having everything. <clears throat> Maybe Europe, America is the richest nations in the world. They are having superpowers, but they can't get the sunlight eight month in a year. They can't produce the food throughout the year. Only four month, five month in year they can. Produce the food, but India huge quantity of the sunlight throughout the year. God has given immense, enormous solar energy to human being in India. India is a hub of solar energy and vital power. We are not utilizing that power in one square kilometer area. 
in one square kilo, kilo square kilometer area we get huge quantity of the solar energy so that we can create 20 megawatt of the electricity 20 megawatt in one square kilometer area in one square feet surface of the green leaves we can conserve 12.5 kilo calorie solar energy per day the green leaves are the best for conserving the solar energy so that we can convert that solar energy into chemical energy and vital power and we can become alive what we have we have a lot of but we don't know about the importance of the natural resources india is having so i request all the mumbai kar pune kar and all the citizens in entire cosmopolitan cities in future maybe in august and september you can discuss with monica deshmuji she will guide you we will organize a big two day workshop back to nature workshop for only mumbai kar only mumbai kar maybe in central mumbai maybe new mumbai or maybe thane any organization will come forward i will be the moderator and when we listen this two day workshop you will change you will totally change and you will become the champion of this movement because subhash palekar back to nature movement is not only farmers movement it is a country movement also so thanks to uh, this guruya uh, college and thanks to principal dr anushree lokur ji i think that she will be here and thanks to suchita uh, sanjita choudhary ji madam song uh, thanks to ravi raghavan ji and thanks to uh, your chandra chandra maure ji who is a uh, today's uh, uh, leading person in this lecture and thanks to all staff and concerned persons of the royal college uh, to give me chance to deliver my lecture about back to nature and natural way of life anybody can ask any question related to human body nature environment uh, sir um, yeah. uh, they are like a few of them have asked questions can i read them yeah yeah definitely uh, there is one sir biswanath sir he had asked how he can grow millets in the terrace is it possible to grow that yeah 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 it is very it is possible to grow the millets uh, because sudhakar patil at kolhapur city he grown millets on the terrace and many has given the courage many has given the courage definitely monika monika will give you all the details of sudhakar patil and now on his terraces you will see the pulses and all seeds and vegetables you can see even in, you can come at pune where he will show you the beautiful terrace gardening under subhash palekar natural farming you can go your ragi that means nasli finger millet you can grow rala rara that means foxtail millet you can grow rosso millet bhagar that means orai on the terraces barnet millet on top millet you will let you can grow on the place successfully i we will supply the seeds and we will supply the cowden uh, cowden and urine also no problem uh, sir uh, there is one more question uh, how they can start their terrace gardening or growing natural foods using spnf method yeah uh, only we want uh, bricks one layer brick for vegetables two layer brick for fruit trees only one layer brick 6 by 6 feet 
one block, six by six feet, one block. This is one layer of the bricks or four, four uh, borders. And we have to add uh, the soil and you have to uh, sow the seed. You have to plant the plant material, planting material. And only we have to utilize the waste of the agriculture or pollen, uh, the use collected from the roadside. And you can grow very beautifully. Bricks are main uh, raw material. Seeds, another second uh, raw material. Soil and use are another raw material. Sir, I, you can yeah. prepare for me in your home. Sir, but I would request you to you kindly. Want, you can utilize gunny bags also. You can utilize gunny bags. No problem. No problem. Not necessarily bricks also. Gunny bags. Yeah. Sir, I request you to kindly elaborate on that because people were waiting just to listen to the terrace gardening. So if you could little uh, elaborate, it will be uh, no, the beneficial. Uh, Adam, for green vegetables and fruit vegetables, that means on, uh, you have a uh, brinjal and also the tomatoes and uh, uh, chilies and all other fruit vegetables. Six by six feet, one block. One layer bricks. You can say one wall, one layer all, wall, four side. You, you see, you keep the brick, you keep the brick, only one brick, four layer, four side. For fruit trees and sugarcane, one brick layer, another brick layer, two brick layer, only border of six by six feet, one block, only border, not inside. And inside, you fill up the uh, four inch layer of the soil, only four inch. You have to prepare first mixture of the soil and Ghana Jyamamrita. Ghana Jyamamrita will be supplied to you. Don't care. By Goshalas. 75% soil and 25% Ghana Jyamamrita. You can mix. And also, the dried loose you can mix and add small quantity of the Jyamamrita. Mix it well and keep for 48 hours for fermentation. After 48 hours, nursery soil will be prepared. And that nursery soil will be covered in that block having only four inch depth, only four inch depth. And then we have to prepare bijambutam in your home to treat the seeds and in the center, in the center of six feet by six feet block, you have to plant seedling of mango, pomegranate, custard apple, or apple also, apple also, papita, even the banana, chiku, sapota, any, any fruit tree with the, uh, your nursery soil and then add, cover the soil on the roots. Then it is the center point. After nine feet distance, one row of green vegetables around that plant, nine inch around that plant, you have to sow the green vegetable seeds 
giving four inch gap in between two seeds. That means this is the central tree, nine inch around that tree, the first layer of green vegetables. After nine inch backside, second layer of fruit vegetables giving 1.5 feet distance between two plants. Again, 1.5 feet, second layer of the fruit vegetables on the four corner of that block, you have to dip, uh, sow the seeds of the pigeon pea to our other or dump stick and you have to give the mulching of dried loose 100 milli juamutam thrice a month or four times a month you have to give per plant and 10 liter water and 500 milli juamutam you mix it and spray on the plant twice a month and give the dried loose when you go outside for morning walk you go with a big bag and these uh, corporate corporation uh, people are burning the fallen uh, tree uh, loose you go uh, you collect the loose and dump in the bag and with bag with scooter you come your home and you take morning off and also you can come with use also. You collect the use first time. And then when we will take in all the not necessary to the residues of the crop can be utilized as a mulching material. Very easy, very easy. It is not easy to view the details in the this one and a half <laughs> hour uh, my speech, uh, when you will listen my today Back to Nature workshop, then you can aware about all these things. Otherwise, uh, we can, uh, you can manage, madam, manage one field visit tour on terraces at Pune. You come to Pune, even in nearest Alibag and nearest to Mumbai and Thane, so many farmers are practicing Subhash Palik and Natural Farming. You can organize your tools on their farms. You can go there. You keep your existence throughout the day. And you aware, you take the guidance from that uh, our Subhash Palik and Natural Farmer, Juhambutam, Juhambutam, how to prepare medicines. And he will give all information. And my books are available and so many videos on YouTube. There is my live, live workshop on YouTube every Sunday. Uh, now, since one year, there was an English every Sunday morning, 7.30 to uh, 10.30, and evening uh, in, uh, Sunday in English, evening in English, morning in Hindi, and Saturday in Marathi evening, uh, morning. Now, once a month, last Sunday, morning 7.30 to 10.30, uh, there will be Hindi. And uh, Saturday evening, uh, Saturday morning 7.30 to 10.30, 10 once a month only, last Saturday in Marathi. And in English, last Sunday of every month, 7.30, uh, 5.30 to 7, 8.30, you can listen my YouTube. Yeah. Uh, my videos on YouTube in every language, English, Hindi, Marathi, Kannada, Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, Gujarati, you can download and you can utilize those videos in your home. If we, I think that it is not possible to do all details today. Thank you very much. Any more questions? No, ma'am. 
So I thank, I'm sure all of you have got at least some insight into what is Subhash Palikar natural farming. Sir has given you some idea about how to do the terrace gardening. And as he has said that it was, it is not possible for him to, uh, you know, the time is because of the less of time. He just uh, gave you the references so you can go through the references. I uh, now, on the behalf of uh, Ramnara and Ruya College, uh, Autonomous College, Department of Greenhouse Management, I thank you, sir, for taking time out of your busy schedule and uh, accepting our invitation for this lecture. I am sure all of us have benefited a lot from this lecture. Your contribution to agriculture and eventually humanity is beyond measure. I take this opportunity to profusely thank you, sir. I am grateful to Monica, ma'am, and Mr. Amit Palekar for helping us in organizing this lecture. I'm very thankful to the Rhea College Alumni Association for collaborating with the Department of Greenhouse Management in organizing this lecture in terrace gardening, the Subhash Palekar natural farming method. Thank you, Ravi Raghavan, sir, for joining us. I am indebted to our principal, Dr. Anushri Lokur, for her constant encouragement and always being there for us whenever we need her support. She was to join us today, but unfortunately could not join because of an urgent meeting. I am extremely thankful to Dr. Jesse Pius, head of the botany department, for making this Zoom platform available to us. A special thank is due to Dr. Sunil Sankadarwar from the Department of Botany and the examination coordinator for his great support. Last but not the least, I thank all the participants for attending this session and making this a great success. Thank you. Thank you very much. All of you. Thank you, sir. Sir, many of our students are doing uh, your way of farming. Monica, ma'am, would you like to say something? Uh, I just uh, thank. Uh, I have to say thank you very much uh, for giving giving me this opportunity, and we will look forward. If anybody wants to have uh, some interaction with me regarding terrace gardening, then I am always there to help them, and you can share my number. Uh, to the in interested participants. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Sanjita, ma'am. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, beta. Is this a Sanjita here? Uh, if we could arrange a. Uh, yes. If if we could arrange a. Um, tour like uh, Guruji said uh, in uh, either Pune. Uh, especially in Pune, uh, of the terrace garden, uh, I think there are two to three people over there who are practicing this uh, with this technique. So, uh, of our uh, GHM department, <laughs> also if possible with ex students. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You all are treasures. Our ex students are our treasures. And you kindly join the alumni association yes. too. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes, definitely. So okay. you you wanted to you wanted us to organize a tour. That is what you're trying to say. Yeah. So like we go for our visits uh, throughout the year. Okay. Okay. So, so once one this... of the visit can be for terrace garden this thing model. Definitely, definitely. Uh, but let these uh, situation become now. Things are opening up uh, slowly. So we will try to do that. Thank you, Nachiket. Yes. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. 
so shall we leave